the FN 509 was born from a need to bridge the gap between the FNS and the requirements for the M17 MHS program. Today we see a number of different variants when it comes to the FN 509, and we're going to be talking about one of those today coming up. Hey everybody, what's going on? Thanks for swinging by, I sure do appreciate it. If this is your first time with the channel, my name is Mark. Oh, hi Mark. Welcome to Fit and Fire. Let's get into this video. This time we are going to be talking about the FN 509, or at least one of its variants. And this one has a number of different um, kind of updates, upgrades, we'll talk about those along with this video as well. If you are not familiar with the FN 509, this is basically the competitor for all the other submissions in the M17 MHS program. Us here in the future know that the P320 is who ended up winning that contract, whether that is the right decision, the wrong decision. I'll let you guys fight about that down in the comment section down below. But I think that this was a strong contender. It didn't make it into quote unquote phase two, the P320 and the Glock 19X were the two that were selected for phase two, but phase two never happened for whatever reason. And we now have the FN 509 and its many different variants. Now this is actually the midsize version and we're gonna be talking about uh, not only this, but some of the other ones that come along with it as well. The 509 Tactical is actually the submission for the MHS program, but it is very, very similar to this. Some, some small nuances here and there that changes it, but realistically, we're not going to be diving into that per se. What I will say that this is a lot of fun to shoot. I've had a great time. I've got about 500 rounds through it so far. This is going to be kind of my initial impressions. I hope to have a follow-up very quickly, but it has a few features that I really do like, but I have some uh, areas that I would love to see it improved on in the future if FN ever decides to do a mod two or, or a, um, an updated version of this and we'll go from there. With that being said, my question to you guys is, who should have won the MHS program? Did the Army pick right with the P320 or should it have been the Glock 19X, the 509, or some of the other uh, submissions like the MNP 2.0? Let me know, sound off in the comment section down below. With that being said, you guys know how I do things when it comes to pistol reviews. I'm gonna talk about the ergonomics. I'm gonna talk about uh, the sights regardless if that's iron sights and or the uh, capability of adding a red dot. And we're gonna talk about the trigger as well. Obviously you can see there's a number of different um, additions to this pistol. We'll talk about all of those as well. But realistically, let's dive into it. First and foremost with the ergonomics. I absolutely love how this thing fits my hand. It is aggressive in its texturing. I really do love how it just, just sits perfectly in my hand. The grip angle is not too aggressive like you would find with a Glock, and uh, it has texturing in all the right places. Almost texturing up to where the slide and frame meets, but uh, it's far enough up that with your support hand, that palm is really going to get in there and help get a good grip on there. Now, one of the things that I would have loved to have seen with this particular pistol is right here on the right side of the frame. I would have loved to have seen some texturing there as a memory spot for your index finger uh, or even your thumb. On this side, you really don't have that because of the takedown lever here, but at the end of the day, uh, it is an area that I would love to see improved and it works without it, especially if you have a good quality grip, you're not going to have a problem with that. Like with most polymer frame striker fire pistols, you're going to have the ability to swap out the back strap if you show choose. I, I like it as it stands right now. One of the great features that I love about this pistol is the ambidextrous controls. This is true ambi. You have the ability to drop the mag from either side and you can do so very easily. There's not really a break-in period when it comes to uh, this type of functionality on this pistol. And you also have the ability to drop the slide from the right-hand side if you are left-handed or 
the left-hand side if you're right-handed. So fully ambidextrous, that is something I really, really do like about this coming right out of the box. Now, one thing that I will say before we go any further is this was bought used from my local store, so I wanna take a second to say a huge thank you to American Cash Exchange. It's kind of my home away from home when I'm just wanting to hang out and check out the new stuff that they've got in. They've been a big supporter of the channel and I really do appreciate everything that they do, not only for letting me know about pretty cool pistols like this, but also allowing me to shoot at their range as well. I've been shooting at their range for about the last year and uh, they have been ex very welcoming and allow me to go out there and do as I do for you guys. So thank you very much for um, American Cash Exchange support. All right, so with that being said, let's dive back into what's going on with the sights on this. As you can see, it does have a red dot mounted on this. This is the Hollow Sun 507C Vulcan, which is the chevron red dot with that large circle to help you find your red dot as you're bringing it to bear. I really do like that, especially for IDPA matches. I've had some issues in the past where I lose my dot through recoil, and this really helps me get back on target very, very quickly. With that being said, I'm not the biggest fan of the chevron red dot, uh, but I do understand its purpose, and I think it will work very, very well for a lot of people who take longer shots, talking like, 50 plus yard shots. I understand it's set up to allow you to do that. For me, I really don't need to do that. I like to train at further distances, but it's really not a requirement for me. So law enforcement, uh, guys who would carry red dots like this for duty, I can understand their perspective. With that being said, let's talk about the stock iron sights that are on here. Um, they're serviceable. There's nothing wrong with them. It's going to be a high-vis tritium field front sight with tritium field two dot rear sight and um, it's not my particular way of setting it up but it is what it is. So it, I'll, I'll take it no problem. Now these are not suppressor height sights. Uh, this is how I purchased it from American Cash Exchange and I just left it that way because I knew that I, this was going to be more of a competition gun than anything. So that's pretty nice. Uh, the slide has some really nice front and rear slide serrations. Um, not overly aggressive, but you can still get a really good grip if you want to uh, charge your pistol from the front. And if not, you can just swipe it against the red dot. That is perfectly fine. Let's get into the trigger. <laughs> And I can't really talk about it when it comes to this particular pistol, but what I can do is talk to you about what I have seen from messing with the 509s at my local shop. Um, the stock trigger is not all that great, in my opinion. There's a lot of stacking when it comes to that trigger. Uh, I would feel that a Glock trigger is actually a little bit better, in my opinion. A lot of people may like the 509 trigger stock, and that's perfectly fine. Um, but for me, it's just, it's just not my cup of tea. And that's not to disparage anyone or say that you have to get a trigger job on it uh, when you purchase this. It's completely fine. You just have to learn how to uh, work through that stacking and uh, figure out that break and reset and everything like that. With that being said, we'll get into some of the upgrades that's been done uh, because we'll talk about my experience shooting this um, after we talk about the trigger. This has an apex trigger on here, and that is something that I really haven't messed with too much. I've uh, had one other pistol a long time ago, we're talking like four years ago, that had an apex trigger put into it, and um, to be frankly honest with you, I've been dealing with stock triggers for so long that it, it, I don't even re remember what it was like to have an apex trigger. This does not lighten the trigger pull at all. We're still sitting at about five to five and a half pounds. Uh, I think the median that I was getting on my trigger test uh, on the weight pool was about 5.25 pounds. And uh, so it's not really lightening anything, but what it does do is it allows me to have consistency. Uh, there's not any stacking. When you get to the wall, there's the wall and it breaks. And that's something I really, really do like. So you don't have to really try to fight through a rolling break or anything like that. Really sharp 
wall and then it breaks over and just cleans that trigger up really, really good. That's something I really do like. And then your reset on this trigger is pretty good as well. Not super short, but a lot shorter than the stock trigger and that's something I really do like. In addition to that, it does have an Apex threaded barrel and a Parker Mountain Machine comp here on the end. And I can tell you that this combination right here with the Apex trigger has been phenomenal. Taking it out to a couple IDPA matches, I've had a blast shooting it. Uh, having a uh, comp on here to help mitigate some of the 124 grain um, nine millimeter that I shoot has been a lot of fun. And uh, I can tell you that it just really helps me get back on target for quick, accurate follow-up shots because I'm able to find my red dot a little bit better and faster as well. So let's talk about brass tacks when it comes down to a pistol like this. This is going to be fairly competitive when it comes to a Glock 19 MOS, uh, like Glock 19 Gen 5 MOS. Uh, so you're looking somewhere around that $550 to $600 range, depending on when and where you buy it. I ended up spending more than that. And to be honest with you, I spent, I think, a little bit more than what I was comfortable in spending, uh, coming in right around $900. But a lot of people would be like, oh man, that's a lot of money. Well, you're talking $600 probably for the pistol. Then you have the Parker Mountain Machine, plus the barrel, the Apex trigger, and the red dot. I think that's actually a pretty decent deal. Not to mention, it did come with extra magazines uh, to include uh, two 15 rounders, this 17 rounder with the extension, and a 21 round magazine as well. So uh, I think I got a pretty decent deal, but I leave it to you guys. Let me know down in the comment section down below. Again, this is offered in a number of different sizes to include a full size, a um, subcompact, and then their tactical model as well that comes with the threaded barrel. So that would help uh, alleviate some of the cost if you're wanting to add a compensator to this pistol as well. Again, I've had a great time with this pistol and I am going to compare this to a couple other pistols. What would you love to see as far as a comparison, let me know down in the comment section down below. Everybody knows that we're gonna be talking about the Glock 19, but which one? And uh, which one should we be talking about? The Glock 19X, the Glock 19 Gen 5 MOS, the Glock 47? Um, let me know, sound off in the comment section. And then if there's other pistols that you want me to compare this to, we'll do that as well. I think I've got a versus versus video, if that makes sense. This versus something else versus something else. I wanna roll that one up for you guys. I think it's gonna be a lot of fun. But at the end of the day, that's all I've got for this one. Again, 500 rounds down. Hopefully you get another 500 rounds through it over the next couple of IDPA matches and uh, let you guys uh, know what I think about it after a thousand rounds. With that being said, I really do appreciate everybody's support. If you guys are interested in supporting the channel, a great way to do that is to share this video. If you haven't already subscribed, I would encourage you guys to think about doing that. Thumbs ups and of course the comment section down below. If you're interested in supporting the channel financially, a great way to do that is heading on over to fitfire.com. There's some great links over there that you can uh, jump in on and purchase things that will help you out as well as some of my uh, shirts from Ballistic Inc. I'll have links down in the comment section in the pinned comment. Again, appreciate you guys. We will catch you guys later. As always, freedom through strength. Here comes a high five. Catch you guys later. Bye, y'all.